for that just in case. System. Uh, two linear equations. So we're going to deal with system of two linear equations and two variables. Example of such a system is 2x minus 1. I'm sorry, 2x minus y equal 1. This is one equation. And say 3x plus 2y equal 4. That's another equation. Those equations, each of them represent a line. Yeah? And in general, when I graph two lines, those two lines may intersect, say, at one point, or those two lines may be parallel to each other, or those two lines may coincide with each other, one on top of the other. In this scenario, maybe both lines are exactly the same line. Yeah? When two lines intersect, or before I even go into that, we say a point is a solution to the equation, to one equation, if the point satisfies the equation. Correct? So, for instance, uh, Say 1, 1, the point 1, 1, if I substitute it into equation number 1 in here, right? So what do I get? 2 minus 1 is 1, 1 equals 1, so that satisfies the equation. So 1, 1 is a solution to that equation. Okay? Could it be a solution to the second equation? I don't know. Let me see. 5 equals 4, no, it's not a solution to the second equation. It's only a solution to the first equation. Yeah? Now, so therefore, when we're looking at this scenario, this point, this point, because it's on the line, it satisfies this line, and it also satisfies this line, because it is on both lines. We call that point solution to the system. So this is the solution to the system of equation we have, yeah? Now, this is not the only solution to that one. You have infinitely many solutions, yeah? <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> for, it, for instance, oh, wow. For instance, we could have another solution, say, 2, 3, yeah? If I substitute it 2 for x, 3 for y, it satisfies. So that's 4 minus 3 is 1. So that satisfies the equation as well. So that means every equation of a line has infinitely many solutions. Yeah? Every point on the line is a solution to that equation. In this case, and this one may have infinitely many solutions. But if they intersect, in here, they intersect at one point. So that point is solution to both equations. Therefore, if those two equations are the system I'm looking at, then those are the solution, or this point is the solution to the system. Yeah? If the lines happen to be parallel in this scenario, notice we don't have any point of intersect, right? So therefore, this system, if these two lines represent the system of equation we're talking about, then in this case, we, the system has no solution. So this system has no solution because basically those two lines do not intersect. However, on this scenario, 
we said both lines are the same line. So every point on line number one is also a point on line number two. And therefore, these two lines intersect infinitely many times. So they have infinitely many solutions. So now we have infinitely many solutions for that particular system. Any questions on those three scenarios? So for instance, we have a system. I say this line, and I say this line. So they intersect at this point. What does that mean? I mean, the x value of this point, whatever it is, x, and then the y value of this point, or the coordinates of this point, belong to both lines. Whether I get the coordinate from this line, or I get it from this line, I'll end up with the same numbers. Yes? So that means those two systems have, those two equations have, the same x, the same y, at one particular point. Yeah? So one way of solving the system is called substitution. One way of calling this is solving the system is called substitution. If this two, if these two equations over here have a solution, right? So that means the y's must be the same and the x's must be the same at that particular point. I can take, for instance, equation number one, I can solve for y. Say, what is y in here? So I take that and I say y equal, notice, if I bring y to this side and one to this side, we end up with 2x minus 1. Yeah? If I take that y value and I, substitute, I can substitute it in here because if they have a solution, those two y's are exactly the same. Yeah? So I can take this y value substitute here. So from, it, this is equation one. From equation two, we have 3x plus two times. Instead of y, I'm going to put that. So it'll be 2x minus 1 equal whatever that is, which is 4. Right. So if I go ahead and simplify this, so we have 3x plus 2 times 2x is 4x. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2 equal 4. Okay. Then we can say 7x equal 6. I bring in the 2 to this side. Yeah. Then we can say x equal 6 over 7. Yeah? x equals 6 over 7. Now we know the x value. We know the x value of that point of intersection. And I can go ahead and substitute that x value into this equation or this equation, which I, will, I feel comfortable with, to figure out what the y value is. Let's substitute here. So we have 2 times 6 over 7 minus y equal 1. Yeah. I can take the y to the other side and then bring the x over here. So 2 times 6 is 12 over 7. Uh, minus 1 equal y. Finding this common denominator. So that's going to be like 7 over 7. Yeah? So 12 take away 7 is y equal 5 over 7. So the point of intercept with these two is the core. 6 over 7 
power of extension. So those two lines, if I were to graph them, they will intercept at that point. Yeah? That's one way of solving system of equation by substitution. Uh, I'm going to move on to uh, solving. We'll come back to this one and solve more problems. Uh, let's follow what the book says. One way to do that is using what we call elimination method. Elimination method is we're trying to eliminate one of the variables. Okay? Let's do some example on that. And I'll show you how to eliminate one of the variables. Example number one says 5x plus y equal 4. And then we have 3x plus 2y. Equals 1. And let's solve that particular equation using elimination method. Okay. First of all, to use elimination method, one thing you want to consider, you want to write both equations in the same format. What do I mean by format? Same thing, no thing. x, y equal a number. The second one is also x, y equal a number. It could also be y equal x plus a number. The other one has to be, again, y equal x plus a number. Or you say y plus x plus a number equals zero. The other one, you write it exactly the same thing. y plus x plus a number equals zero. Come. So those are already written in the same format, so I really don't have to change. Step number two I want to look for is, I want to try to make the coefficient of one variable to be the same opposite in sum. Same number, but opposite in sum. Yes? So if this is 5, I want the other one to be negative 5. If this is a, uh, 2, I need the other one to be a negative 2. Yeah? That's, those are the steps that we need to take. Which variable do I change? First, I always look for the variable that has a coefficient of 1. Why? Because it's easy to change the 1. You change the 1 by simply multiplying it by whatever number you want. Okay? So in this case, the only, the only variable that has the coefficient of 1 is this y over here. Yes. If I look at the other y, it's a plus 2. And I want to make this to be a negative 2. So I multiply the whole equation by a negative 2. So this way, one, this one will be a negative two, this one will be a positive two. Elimination, and sometimes people call it addition method. Why? Because once we make those coefficients opposite in sign, when we add them, what happens to them? They cancel out. They cancel out, so that variable doesn't exist. That's why it's called elimination. And some people call it addition method, is because we do addition to do the elimination. Yeah? So let's go ahead and do that. Now, on the next step, all I'm going to do right now, rewrite those equations I want and exactly what I did to them. For example, this is equation number one. This is equation number two. I'm going to multiply equation number one by negative two. So I'm going to put a note here that says negative two times equation one. So whenever I read the next line over here. I know exactly what you did to. Yes? Or whoever is reading your work. So now, negative, when I multiply a number by equation, I multiply all the terms of that equation by that number. So I'm going to multiply negative 2 times the first term is 5x. Negative 2 times 5x is negative 10x. Negative 2 times y is negative 2y. 
equal negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. So far, so good. Equation number 2, I already got the y's to be the same. I don't have to do anything with it. So I'm just going to write down equation 2. That's going to be 3x plus 2y equal 1. Then when I combine these together, when I combine these together, I get negative 10x plus 3x is minus 7x. And then we have minus 2y plus 2y, those two cancel out. Equal minus 8 plus 1 is equal to minus 7. Solve for x. We can divide both sides by minus 7. So x equal to 1. So now we know the value of x. All we need to do is figure out what the value of y is. To figure out the value of y, just substitute in any of these equations. It looks like the top one is easier. So I'm going to substitute on top one. So 5 times 1 plus y equals 4. So 5 plus y equals 4. Yeah. So y equals negative 1. So the point that satisfies both system, both equations, is 1, negative 1. Yeah? To check your answer, since you use this equation to look for y, substitute your answer back into this equation and see if it makes sense. So if I substitute the one here, so 3 times 1 is 3, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2 equal 1, and 3 minus 2 does give me 1. So that's a correct equation. Therefore, my calculation are correct. Yes? Any question? Okay, let's solve another one. What if I don't have a coefficient of 1? Uh, say, for instance, 3x minus 4y equal 1 and 2x plus 3y equal 12. We need to solve this system of equation. How do I solve that system? Well, again, they are the same format, right? Uh, I don't have one with a coefficient equal to 1. Then my next best bet is to find a number that I can multiply this coefficient by and another number I can multiply this coefficient by such that they are the same. Yeah? Those numbers can be, don't have to be the same number for both, definitely, right? Now, the easiest numbers to find, or the, the bad situation or the worst case scenario, is multiplying the top equation by the coefficient of the bottom one, yes? And multiplying the bottom equation by the coefficient of the top. So this way, we end up with whatever we need. Now, not all the time it is the best way to do it, but sometimes, say, for instance, you have 6x and you also have 4x, yes? If I multiply the top by 4, you end up with 24. The bottom by 6, you end up with 24, right? But I could have gone it differently. 
I could have multiplied the top by two and the bottom by three. And this way I get both of them to be 12. So you do have it, not to say it is wrong to multiply by four and six. It's just giving you bigger number. It will still work, it will still be good, but it will give you a bigger number. Yes? Now, because those two numbers or those two numbers don't have any common factors, yeah, then I will multiply by their coefficient. In this case, they do have a common factor, which is simply what? Two. I can eliminate that two from the multiplication. So if I take away the two from four, I end up with a two, right? And if I divide the six by two, I end up with three. So those are the two numbers I will multiply with. As far as which two values you want to make the same, it really doesn't matter. You can make the axis the same, or you can make the y's the same. Just make sure one is going to be positive, one is going to be negative, and the absolute value of both coefficients will be the same. Now, if you don't mind multiplying by a negative, because both of these are positive, right? So I need to multiply one of them by negative, no matter, right? That will be changing the axis to, to have the same absolute value coefficient. If you do mind multiplying by negative, notice those two are the opposite in sign already. Yeah? So you don't have to multiply by negative. But which one you choose, it really doesn't matter. It still gives you the same answer at the end. Yeah. So let's go ahead and say multiply this by, if I were to multiply this by 2, this by 3, now we have the same coefficient for the axis, right? But I need one of them to be negative. Yeah? So I'm just going to make one of them negative by multiplying by a negative instead of a positive. Which one I multiply by a negative? It, again, it doesn't matter. Yeah. So let's write down what we're doing. So negative two times equating one. That will give me minus six x plus eight y equal minus two. So far, so good. And then, Three times equation two. That's going to give me 6x plus 9y equal 36. Yeah? Now let's put those together. Now if you put them together and none of the variables will cancel that, guess what? You did something wrong. So these two variables, this x is going to cancel out because one is positive, one is negative, and one is, both of them are sixes. So 8y plus 9y is 17y equal 36 take away 2 is 34. And if I solve the equation for y, I divide by 17, so y equal 34 divided by 17 is 2. So now we know the y value for that equation is 2. Okay? To figure out what the x value, again, we just substitute the y value into one of those equations. Whichever one you want, again, it doesn't matter. Let's substitute on the top one. So we have 3x. Minus 4 times 2 equal 1. So 3x minus 8 equal 1. Bring the 8 to the other side. That becomes positive. So 3x equal 9, because 8 plus 1 is 9. So what is x? I divide 9 by 3, I get... I substitute it in here to figure out the x value. I can substitute in here to make sure they're correct. So for x is 3, so 2 times 3 is 6. For y is 2, 3 times 2 is 6. 
and 6 plus 6 gives me 12. So that is correct. Any question? In both cases we did, we end up with a solution. And that would be the only solution there is for those two equations. Let's take a look at a number, another one. Let's say negative 4, 4x plus y equal 2. So negative 4x plus y equal 2. And for the second one, say negative. Say 8x minus 2y equal 4. We got negative 4. Okay? Again, to solve this, notice we do have a y here, right? Coefficient one, so that's the easiest one to use. So I want to make this y to be well. This is a negative two, so I want to make that two. To make that two, I'm going to multiply by simply two. Yeah. So two times equation one would give me negative eight x plus two y equal four. And equation two, give me 8x minus 2y equal 4, minus 4. Yeah? So what happened now? Minus 8x plus 8x, what happened to those? They cancel out. 2y and 2 minus 2y, well, what happened to those? So what do I have on this side? Two. Don't have anything left, right? <coughs> Equal. What is 4 minus 4? Zero. I ended up with a statement. It says 0 equal 0. Is that true? When is it true? Hmm? They are the same line. When they are the same line, what did we say about the solution? Remember, I put the three scenarios here, right? How many points of contact? If they are the same line, remember, we're looking at the number of points of contact, right? How many points of contact do they have? Infinite. Yes? So what do I have in here? Infinitely many solutions. So both lines are the same. Therefore, you have infinitely many solutions. Clear? Anytime, anytime you're solving an equation, doesn't matter what that equation is. And you end up with a statement that is true all the time. Then you have infinitely many solutions. Yeah? Whether you're doing a linear equation, whether you're doing a, a system of equation, whether you're doing whatever. If you end up with a statement that's true all the time, for instance, I may end up with x equal x. Isn't that true? All the time? Yeah? That is mean we have infinitely many solutions. If we end up with 15 equal 15, isn't that true all the time? Infinitely many solutions. Yeah? Let's go now. So this scenario gave me infinitely many 
solution. And we call the system dependent. We call the system dependent. Basically, both equations depends on each other. All right. Let's consider the following system. It says 3x minus 2y equal 4. And say we have minus 6x plus 4y. Equal. Say 7. Okay. Uh, inconsistent. So what do I have? Again, to solve that, I can multiply the 3 by 2, I get a 6, right? So let's do that. So 2 times equation 1, we end up with 6x minus 4y equals 8. Yes? I go to the equation 2. We have minus 6x. Plus 4y equals 7. Again, if I try to solve the system, let's combine these two equations. A 6x take away 6x is 1. Yeah? Again, negative 4y plus 4y, what happened to those? They also cancel out. So what do I have left? Zero on this side. Zero equal eight plus seven is fifteen. The zero equal fifteen. Is that ever true? No. So what does that mean? No solution. Anytime. Anytime you're solving a equation. Doesn't matter whether it's a system of equations, doesn't matter if it's just an equation, anything you're solving. And then you end up with a statement that says 0 equal uh, 15, 3 equal 4, 5 equal 7. Anything that comes up that is not true, then the equation has no solution. Yes? Now, don't confuse it with the fact that say x equal 2x. x equal 2x is true. There are situations where you can get x equal 2x. Yep. Why? Because if x is 0, then x will be equal to 2x. Okay? But anytime, say for instance, if I say x equal x plus 1, that's never true, right? Is that ever true? No, so therefore, no solution for that one. Yeah. So anytime you get a statement that is false all the time, that is no solution. For the system of equation, we call this system, because you have no solution in it, we call it inconsistent. They call that system inconsistent system. So now we looked at consistent system where you have a solution, one solution, right? Dependent system is where you have infinitely many solutions, yeah? And inconsistent system where you have no solution whatsoever. Yeah? Let's put those, let's put those into some application problem. Let's put those into some application problem. Let's see how we can apply a system of equation into, say, scenarios from real life. It says 800 people attend a baseball game. So there was a baseball game, 
for which the number of people attending happened to be 800. The revenue from that game, or the to total amount of money received from selling tickets, or the total ticket sales, happened to be 3,000. So revenue, 3,102 dollars. So this is what the people running the game received that day. Okay? It says adult tickets are six dollars. So if a person that go in there is an adult, he pays six dollars for the ticket. Yeah. But if you have a student ID, but if you have a student ID, so definitely if you are a student. They give you a discount. Student only pay three dollars. Student only pay three dollars. The question is, how many adults attended, and how many of those were students? Okay. How many of the adults, or how many adults? Who paid six dollars, and how many adults, uh, how many students had paid three dollars? Yeah. So how do I approach this problem, and how do I solve? Since I'm looking for the number of adult tickets sold, right, and the number of students tickets sold, it'll be wise to assign a variable for each one. So let's say, for instance, let's say x is the number of adult tickets. So far, so good. And let's say y, y is the number. Of student tickets. Now, when you assign a when you assign a variable, you can always refer to it as that variable. Yeah. Now, what do I know? What do I know? What do I know about the relationship between x and y? So first of all, how many people attended the game? Eight on. And all of them are either adult or students, right? So that means all the adults plus all the students must be how much? Eight on. That's equation number one. Yeah? So that means all the adults plus all the students are 800, yeah? What else do I know? We know how much money the people, the, the revenue was, right? Where does this money come from? Selling tickets, right? If I wanna figure out how much money I'm making, I'm gonna know how many students I sold to, right? How many students, how many adults I sold to, right? And for the student, I multiply by three, for the adult, I multiply by six, correct? I don't know the numbers, but I know the letters. Does that make sense? So because X is the adult, so that means whatever how many X is, whatever X is, if I multiply its value by six, because that's how much it's going to cost me, the adult, to go in, right? Plus. How many students, I don't know, but I know it's a Y, 
And if we multiply that by three, now the total amount must be how much? Uh, 3,100. Yeah? So now I have a system of equation. How do I solve that? I'm going to multiply. I want to make these two the same because this is one, right? Since this is a lower number, so I'm going to multiply by negative 3 here. So I'm going to say negative 3 times equation 1. You got minus 3x minus 3y equals minus 2400. Yeah? And from equation 2, what do we get? We get 6x plus 3y equals 3102. Yep. Now, if I put those together, 6x take away 3x is 3x. And those 3y's and plus 3y cancel out. If I subtract those two numbers, we end up with $702, right? So to figure out what x is, we divide by 3. So x equal, if I divide 702 by 3, that should give me a 2, a 0, 10, that should give me a 3, and that's it. So that means 234 for x. But x represents which ones? The adult, yeah? So that means we have 234 adults at the gate. How many students? We just subtract that from 800, yeah? And that should give me, so y equals 800 minus 2, 3, 4, and that should be 6, 9, 6, and that's going to be 7, 2 is 5. So that means 566 students attended the game, while 300, 234 adult attended the game. Yes? Any questions? No, I think we're going to stop here today. Again, as a reminder, let me stop recording.